Kelly in, and welcome to Pandora. March saw a lot of news break for the franchise relating to the sequels, which has helped to kick off the hype train for wider audiences. But what was shown, and should we be excited? Today I'll take a look at all of these stories from the past month, and some older news I forgot to cover in my previous roundup video. The first big piece of news to cover, and one that was only reported last week, is that according to news outlet Ankler, we could potentially be seeing the first trailer for Avatar 2 released with the next Marvel film, that being Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness in May. Now while a lot of hype was built up around this, it's important to say that it hasn't been confirmed at all, and there's only one report, meaning this could all be forced and we won't be seeing any trailer for a while longer. However, if there was a good time to release a trailer and guarantee it gets a wide enough exposure, this would be it. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is a huge franchise with many high grossing films and by attaching Avatar 2 to its latest outing could take the sequels into a new height of popularity. But once again take everything you read about this with a grain of salt. While I personally would love to see the trailer for the sequel this early, I think it's more likely we will see the trailer several months after and announce as its own thing, either for a press event or a live stream. Around the same time last week, another massive piece of news for the sequels was released, this time relating to the merchandising of the film. In an interview with the website License Global, Stephanie Young of Disney and Kathy Franklin of Lightstorm Entertainment shed light on the upcoming consumer product collaborations for the film. While the interview is a fascinating read and I would highly recommend everyone takes the time to read it, here are some of the highlights. There is future plans for Avatar the Exhibition to tour in other areas of the world outside of Asia where it's been currently touring. There will be more DK books published later this year for the franchise, and for each of the sequels going forward. This is something that I truly can't wait for, and is something I hoped would be happening after seeing how well they made the world of Avatar a visual exploration. There will be more Dark Horse comics which will help to spearhead an Avatar comics program. These will also tie in stories from the franchise's past and present. Several world class but yet as unnamed game developers have been signed on to create original gaming experiences, which hopefully means a lot more Avatar video games in the next several years. McFarlane Toys will be developing a line of highly articulated action figures which will be collector focused. While this is something I've been speculating on for months now, it was a nice surprise to see McFarlane as the ones producing the new line of figures, mainly due to the fact that they focus focus more on adult collectors than anyone. I do wonder if this means there won't be a line of figures for a younger demographic this time round, in the same vein as the Mattel line from the first film. To complement this however, and potentially appealing to that younger audience, they also announced that LEGO will be producing sets that cover the major moments from both first and second film. This was rumoured several months ago, but it's brilliant to see it confirmed and I really can't wait to see how they're made. I for one will be getting as many of them as possible. Finally, the interview talks about smaller collaborations between companies such as Hallmark, Adidas, Citizen and Trends International. These will include everything from costumes, fashion, footwear, home products and outdoor play. It seems nearly every aspect of retail will be covered by these small adventures. Overall it's wonderful to see so much love and passion be put into the franchise again from so many sources. This is a huge investment for Disney and Lightstorm and I really hope it pays off. They seem to have most of the markets covered by these collaborations and I just hope it helps to bring the franchise back into the limelight for normal consumers. Only time will tell. The next big headline for the Avatar sequels is that actress Zoe Saldana, best known for playing Natiri in the franchise, was brought to tears when watching the footage for Avatar 2. In an interview with Kevin McCarthy for People.com, it's amazing to see her reaction to the sequel, as you can see how much it means to her on an emotional level. It clearly shows there's been a lot of love and passion put into the sequels, and I really can't wait to experience all of that for the first time. It looks like Avatar 2 will be quite the emotional roller coaster and try to tell a far more emotionally complex story than before. So that was the main pieces of news for the franchise from this month, but I also wanted to talk about several other stories that I missed from the last two months that still have a lot of relevance in my opinion. The first of these is that back at the end of February, a short trailer for the upcoming mobile game Avatar Reckoning was released on Facebook. The trailer shows off character customization, the different classes in the game, and the first and third person gameplay. There is a lot to break down in the short trailer alone, and I intend to make a video covering all of this soon. However, if you want a brilliant breakdown of this trailer, then I would highly suggest you check out avatarsequels.com as they were the ones that first reported on the story and helped to bring it to my attention. Please check out their site, they're a wonderful way to keep up with all the latest Avatar news as it happens, and I've been nothing but supportive for the channel. A link will be in the description below to both the article and the site. In February, we also found out that the development of the mobile game Avatar Pandora Rising will be ending and the game will be closing on April the 4th. This is such a shame to hear as I really do think the game had a lot of potential if it could have seen a far wider release. I loved its integration of the franchise's lore and how it was able to develop 
bit further. A lot of new concepts have their origin in the game, and I just really hope that they're used again going forward and not forgotten about. It will be interesting to see if any of these elements appear in Avatar Reckoning, as it seems to be taking the place of Pandora Rising in the market. I can't thank enough all of the developers who worked on bringing the universe alive in this game though, and I only hope they could have seen how much we as a community appreciated the game. In a more positive tone, February also saw the announcement of the next comic book series of the franchise from Dark Horse Comics. Entitled Avatar Adapt or Die, the six issue series is a prequel to the first film, covering events only mentioned in the film, but never seen on screen, such as the opening of Grace's school for the Na'vi, and the peace negotiations around this that eventually led to the famed massacre and general hostilities between the two races on Pandora. It's wonderful to see this aspect of the lore covered in the series, and I can't wait to get even more background and context behind these events. It will also be a great way to expand on certain characters of this period, such as Silwanin, and develop deeper into their thoughts. I really can't wait to get my hands on the series when the first issue releases on May the 4th. On a much sadder note, February also saw the passing of the renowned film editor David Brenner, who for the past several years has been working on the Avatar sequels. His past work includes films such as 2012, Man of Steel, Independence Day, and The Day After Tomorrow. His family announced that he passed away on the 17th of February. He was a very talented and amazing individual who's helped to contribute to so many timeless films. He will be missed by many in the community, and our thoughts go out to his friends and family at this time. Lightstorm Entertainment have set up a fundraising campaign to help support his family, and I shall leave the link below. Please take a look, and if you can, please support it in any way you can. I don't want this episode to end on a sad note, so the last small piece of news relates to the world of Avatar A Visual Exploration, a book I'm sure anyone watching this channel will know well by now. During its release, a small preview video was uploaded to the official Avatar's Twitter, which I would highly recommend you check out, as it's only a few minutes long but really shows how much love and care they have for the book, and still for the franchise. Plus, expect one more video from me on the book in the future. So March was a busy month for the franchise, and as we move closer to summer, I feel it's only going to get crazier from here. There are sure to be a lot of announcements and reveals to come the closer we get to the sequel's release, especially from all the new collaborations. It's an exciting time to be an Avatar fan indeed, and you can be sure that I'll be covering all of the news here on the channel. But thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. What do you think of all the news from March? Do you think we'll be getting a trailer in May? And what do you want to see come about from these new collaborations? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. But until then, hey Alvai, give me.